Yo, what's up guys? You got Pokeyame here with another Wi-Fi battle. This time I'm playing an old school legend, the Killer Nacho. His videos were some of the first I ever saw on YouTube. We're not playing any specific tier like OU, UU, RU, but we're actually playing a roulette battle. Now, what a roulette is, it was actually made by MTG Xerxes back in the day. You use a randomizer, you, um, you randomize six numbers and based on the number of Pokemon you have in your boxes, and then you pick the Pokemon that line up with that number. So... The Killer Nacho, primarily being a Wi-Fi battler, definitely got better picks than I did. I do encourage you to go and check him out, though. His link is down below. Um, post Wi-Fi battles very, very frequently. Also, feel free to check out the Beast Boost merchandise. Those are linked down below. Now, we got a Stoutland lead versus a Scizor. Unfortunately, my Stoutland, which he picked for me, is not a Fire Fang variant, so I can't go right for Fire Fang. We're going to switch out to my Tentacruel. I'm an offensive Tentacruel. And this U-turn is going to do a hell of a lot, man. Over half damage to jam that over here. So he U-turns out into his pincer. And I'm not going to lie, if this pincer loved him, if this pincer actually loved him, if he didn't break up with it through text and then go out with its best friend, this return would have swept my entire team. But luckily, luckily, the Killer Nacho treated this pincer dirty. And this return hated him. This Mon hated him. This return does absolutely nothing. And on top of that, Jamvad, for everybody forgetting about him, decided I'm going to crit him now with this Hydro Pump. So I am back in this game, even though I should have lost once this Pinsir came out. So he's going to go for another return. I'm um, assuming he actually had close combat in that Earthquake, which is why he didn't go for that. And he's going to be able to knock me out with that. However, I can go out to Mimikyu. The only Mon on my team that won't take damage from Quick Attack and can knock it out with Shadow Seek because of the crit. But, um... Him being smart does go for the quick attack, breaking my disguise, busting it, Mimikyu is now busted, but I can go right for the Shadow Sneak and pick him off. Unfortunately, I'm not an SD variant, this is actually a VGC Mimikyu, which uh, is Trick Room Psych Up. So, he's gonna bring out a Scizor, another Pokemon that I have absolutely no switches to. He could actually spam Bullet Punch. I do have an Araquidon in the back, but that's the only thing stopping me from losing to Pokemon like Keldeo, um, and even... Toxicroak and you'll see how so I have to stay in go for Shadow Sneak just to get off some damage We're gonna go right out to Araquanid because I did pick a Toxicroak for him I'm assuming he's gonna go out to that since it's the best I think it's the best honestly Araquanid switching in the game and I'm gonna go for a soak This is not an offensive Araquanid. This is a I guess a nice corrosion variant because I had the soak plus the toxic plus infestation Shout out to Chimpak. This was a set that he told me about back in the day uh, when Sun and Moon first came out, which wasn't actually that long ago, but I go right for the um, the soak on the incoming Toxic Croak as it actually gets hit by its own Black Sludge because it's pure water type. Gonna throw off a Toxic as he's smart enough to expect that. Goes out into a Shaman. Very solid play because of Natural Cure. You don't really care about that. I'm assuming he knew that I would have Toxic because I do have Soak. Now, I do have Kumala. I actually, he actually picked two of my favorite Pokemon from this generation, Kamala and Mimikyu. So I'm going to go out to Kamala. I am Spadef, uh Wish variant, knowing that I could take a Seed Flare, but I don't take it too, too well just because of Kamala's uh, low base HP, much like every other Pokemon in Sun and Moon, and I can hit him with a U-turn right here. I'm trying to get off some uh, damage on this Shaman because uh, he did pick a Decidueye for me, which is maybe my only chance of winning this game if I can weaken Toxicroak, if I can weaken Keldeo, if I can weaken Shaman, if I can weaken Scizor. So... Uh, we're going to go for U-Turn as he brings in the Keldeo, and this gives me my Araquanid as a switch in because Keldeo typically can't touch Araquanid. I do resist fighting, I do resist water, I resist ice as well. So we're going to go right back on Araquanid, and again, I'm going to throw off a Soak because... Or actually, this time I decided to throw off an Infestation because last time he switched out when I threw off a Soak, and this time, no, I want him to stay right there. I want him to take his damage. He is going to become this Water type, whether he likes it or not. I don't need his consent to do this, and I can throw off a Toxic. So... We're going to throw off a Soak right here, um, though I did see Black Sludge, obviously, so I was thinking this might be Bulk Up, this could be SD Black Sludge, the Life Orb is a little bit more common, then again, these are just randomly picked Pokemon, so we have no real pull over what they have, so hit him with a Soak, he's going to take his nice Black Sludge damage and Infestation, and now I can hit him with Toxic, because his Gunk Shot is not Stab, I know that I can take it now, since he's just pure Water type, so I'm going to stay in and go for that Toxic, and also the fact that I have zero switch-ins to this Toxic Oak, I have absolutely zero switch-ins to this Toxic Oak, so we're going to be stalling him down, wearing him down a little bit with the Infestation, with the Black Sludge, with the Toxic, my children are coming up from the ground, my little Vespiquins, and they're, uh, that's what I always thought Infestation looked like, like little, 
Vespi Quinn Bs. I guess they would be called Home Bs, not Vespi Quinn Bs. But uh, I don't have a really switch. And I was thinking about going out to Decidueye, predicting a Drain Punch. Uh, that way I could avoid that and then hit him more with the Black Sludge was Toxic. But he ended up going for the Gunk Chat anyway. I figured he had no reason not to go for that, which is why I fought against that play. And now I can go out to my Decidueye. What I'm hoping he does is he goes for Sucker Punch. That way I can source this up. He'll go down to the damage from Poison plus Black Sludge, and I'll get up a plus two Decidueye at full HP. Unfortunately, he goes for Bullet Punch. He actually told me that this was a misclick. He meant to go for Sucker Punch, so my play might have worked out if he didn't misclick, but the misclick ended up working out for him. Not only does he get off damage on me with Bullet Punch, but he also poisons me because of Poison Touch, so Decidueye is now at half, but thankfully, I was able to get rid of the Toxicroak. He's not gonna go out to a Scizor. Unfortunately, I need a Diamond and Pearl, an ADV, a Gen 2, a Gen 1, a Gen 5, anything that's not a Gen 6 crit. Well, I don't remember if Gen 5 was two times. I, think. I needed a crit from back in the day, but I don't get it. I need to do double the damage, not 1.5 times the damage. Uh, but he's going to be able to knock me out with bullet punches. I'm going to go out to my Stoutland. I really wish this thing did have uh, Fire Fang because in the beginning of the game, I would have been able to get rid of Stout, um, of Scizor with a Choice Band Fire Fang. But at that range, he is in range of my Choice Band Return. And I do treat my female dogs well, as you can see. So, Stoutland actually does love me. I'm going to be able to knock him out with that return. He's going to go out to Shinotic. He could have actually swept me by just going out to Keldeo and clicking Secret Sword. But... He has a little pet peeve about not sending out Pokemon, not using them. I can completely understand that. I feel the same way when I use a Pokemon on Showdown. I want to send them out and use them. So it's going to wave its little <laughs> mushroom at me. Put me to sleep with Sport. Surprised he didn't go for Shen Sap um, for Shinotic since he would have gone all the way back up to full HP and got rid of my attack. But I guess he just figured he could beat me 1v1 by going for Spore and then clicking Giga Drain. Um, every single time, but Stalin is able to survive that, and I'm actually going to end up getting this wake right here, and uh, I will be able to knock out these Shinotic with the return. I'm a little bit ahead of the video, but I mean, you already know, I, I lose the counter. I was in the back, and yeah, Shaman in the back, and this isn't no Scarf Stalin. This is, uh... This is just the Choice Man Stoutland, which is great, you know, it's a great mod. Um, I picked it, it got picked from an RU team that it was on, but, uh... And in the case, gets the effect sport, doesn't matter, but he's going to be able to go out to his Caldeo, knock me out with the secret sword, and all I have in the back is my Kumala, which is definitely not going to be enough to survive a life orb secret sword from Caldeo, and that is going to be good game. So, thank you everybody for watching, it was definitely a fun game, uh, roulettes are all about luck and what you can pick and I definitely didn't really have too much for his team but it was still a lot of fun so I encourage you guys to go ahead and check him out his channel link is down below like I said if you guys want to pick up a beast boost merchandise shirt sticker mug or uh, hoodie you can the link is down below and I'll see you guys next time goodbye friends